Hi Speedwino friends, I'm back today with another soldering and assembling video, this time looking at how you can start out with surface mount work on your own boards and ECUs at home. A few years back I did a video showing the assembly and soldering of a Speedwino V0.4 board and I've gotten a lot of great feedback about how useful that video was but also how I could improve or other things that, that people would like to see in terms of how-tos. By far the most requested though was from people who've, who've done a little bit of soldering themselves and are comfortable enough putting together one of the, the Speedwino kit boards, but are also looking at stepping things up a little by perhaps doing their own board designs and are interested in what's involved with doing some surface mount work. So as a bit of an introduction, as the name suggests, surface mount electronics are components that sit on top of a PCB rather than the more traditional through-hole components that, as the name suggests, are passed through the board. Compared to through-hole components, surface mount not only allows for much, much more circuitry to be used on a single board due to the smaller size, but increasingly there are a lot of parts that are only available as surface mount components. The problem though is that compared to, to basic through-hole soldering, there's a slightly higher barrier to entry and I think a lot of people are a little bit nervous about it or think that you need a heap of expensive gear in order to be able to assemble a surface mount board. Whilst I don't do a lot of by hand assemblies, uh, every time there's a new Speedwino board that's in testing, I'll usually put together a few by hand. And so I thought I'd do a bit of a how-to video on the method that I've, I use. Today I'm going to be assembling one of the new beta boards for the Miata NB8B or MB2. Board, which are the models running from years 2001 through 2005. This board shares a, a number of the core circuits with the existing NA plug and play board, but introduces a few new things such as alternator control. Overall, most of the parts here aren't too difficult to work with, but there are a couple that have very fine pitch and will need to be a little bit more careful when placing them. Almost all boards will have a mixture of surface mount and through hole components and this is no different. There's the connector, the map sensor and a few big power diodes and things but by far the majority of the components here are surface mount. So there, there are different methods of doing surface mount work at home and the, the one I'm going to be using here today is one that I've used a lot of times before and whilst it's not necessarily the fastest method that's out there it doesn't require any special tools whatsoever and can be done very, very cheaply at home. Whilst practice certainly helps in improving your technique, it's also a method that's fairly simple to understand. And anyone who can use a soldering iron can learn this method fairly quickly. It's definitely not something that you're gonna to wanna to do if you're assembling a big stack of boards because it does take a, a little bit longer than some other methods, but for once off and testing units, it's a really terrific method. Okay, so the tools I'm gonna to be using today are the board itself, all the components that I'll be adding to the board, a bill of materials or a, a bomb, a pair of tweezers. Now these are a special electronics tweezers, but there's nothing that special about them. You, you can just use any tweezers with a fairly fine point that you have at home. Some duct tape, and I'll get to the, the purpose of that in a moment. Some solder paste, and I'll talk a little bit more about this as we go through. A stencil. Now the, the stencil is something that you can elect to get when you have your, your PCBs printed and is what we're going to be using for this method. Some wire clippers, a heat gun or soldering station or SMD soldering station, a soldering iron, a small plastic card of some sort, and optionally and very recommended, some solder wick. During this video, I'm going to be using a video microscope that I, I recently purchased thanks to all the fantastic people who support me through Patreon. This definitely isn't a hard requirement though. Um, and you can do the board and part inspection with something like a good magnifying glass or even prior to getting this one, I was using just a cheap $10 USB microscope that I got off eBay and that was fine. Rather than placing the solder by hand for each component, what I'm going to be doing is using a stainless steel stencil of the board. These are available at pretty much any PCB manufacturer these days and are usually about $15 on top of the board price itself. 
They allow us to place the solder paste onto the board fairly accurately and without the need to do it component by component. There's a lot of different ways these stencils can be used and there are plenty of expensive jigs and frames and things that you can use. But today I'm just going to be using a simple method of stencil layout. Whilst it might be slightly tempting and to do the nice, easy and comfortable thing of placing the through hole parts of a board first, we need to start with the surface mount. And the first thing we're going to need to do is secure the board itself in place. To do that, I'm going to be using a super high tech method of simply taping down four other boards around it. You don't have to use other PCBs, but I find that they tend to be very convenient as I've usually got a bunch of them left over from other projects or even have simply ordered some more when I've ordered the test boards that I'm, I'm populating. And importantly, they're exactly the same height as the board that we're assembling. And that, that's gonna make life a lot simpler for us. To do this, we just need to lay out our board in the center and then place and tape down four other boards around it. With our board now held firmly in place, the next thing to do is to secure the stencil over the top of it. Again, I found the easiest way to do this is to simply tape it down in place. You need to be very careful to align everything correctly between the stencil and the board, and then also to make sure that you don't let the stencil lift at all when you tape it down. If it does lift, you'll end up with a gap in between the stencil and the board where the solder paste can build up and run into the slides. Once the stencil is firmly taped down to the board, it's time to start laying down our solder paste. If you've never used or seen solder paste before, it's a strange sort of gray goo that's made up of normal lead and tin suspended in tiny little blobs of a gel. Here's a, an up close view of it under the microscope. You can get it in jars, but I find it's much, much easier to work with from a syringe. You have to store the solder paste in the fridge when you're not using it, but you also need to remember to bring it out a few hours early as it needs to be in at room temperature in order to flow properly. To apply it to the board, I'm going to lay out a line of paste along the edges of the board and then wipe it over the board using a card. Now there are specialty soldering squeegees and rollers and things, but I've found that applying with a nice flexible card such as an old credit card, or in this case an old voucher card, works just as well. You won't need a whole heap of solder paste, just enough to fill all the holes in the stencil. So you shouldn't be ending up with a whole thick layer of it coating the stencil afterwards. Make sure that you work your way across all the holes in the board, particularly all the ones up in the corners, as some stencils will have cutouts for the through hole components, but don't worry about filling those with paste. If you do get paste in there, it'll simply get melted in when we go over things with the heat gun. Once we've got a nice coat of solder paste laid down, we can carefully remove the stencil, being very careful not to smear the paste. If everything has gone well, you should see a nice little drop of solder paste at every point you're going to lay down the component at. If you pull the stencil off and find a whole mess of paste though, don't stress at all, you can simply wipe the board down and start over again. You'll lose a little solder paste, but the board itself will be fine. At this point, we're ready to start the somewhat tedious task of laying down all our components. This is by far the longest and slowest part of the process, but working your way through each part one by one and referring to the bill of materials 
you'll ensure that everything is placed correctly. It's personal preference, but I like to start by mounting the fine pitch components first, as it means there's nothing else in the way around them. For this board, by far the most difficult component is the MC33814 IC with a pitch of just 0.5mm. As with through hole components, it's super important that we make sure to check polarity and alignment before placing a component. Sometimes this can be more difficult to see with surface mount ICs as they're identified not just with markings but also by the shape of them themselves. To actually lay the components, I'm going to be using a set of fine tweezers and gently push the part down onto the solder paste. Under the microscope, you can see that the alignment of the solder paste isn't 100% perfect. Don't stress too much about this though. As long as there's some paste on the pad, the soldering process will take care of the parts between the pads. So I'm going to slowly work my way around this board and hopefully not run into any issues as we go. Okay, so with all the surface mount components placed, it's time to start the fun part, applying the heat. There's a few different ways you can approach this, including using a toaster oven or stovetop, but personally, I prefer to use hot air for this. Whilst you can get away with using a regular heat gun on low and with a suitable nozzle, I generally recommend getting a cheap SMD station for this, and I'll include some links in the description to some cheap but very usable units. You really don't need to spend a lot of money, to get something that is more than up to the task and having fine control of the temperature and airflow really makes things much simpler. I'm going to work my way around the board using a back and forth motion at about 45 degree angle. I find this works best as it allows the board area surrounding the component to heat slightly which can help the solder process. It can take upwards of 10 seconds before there's enough heat in the solder paste but when it reaches the required temperature you'll see the components start to snap into place. I mentioned earlier that smaller components such as this 0.5mm pitch MC33814 can be trickier to work with. If you're lucky and were very careful with the amount of solder paste then you'll get a nice clean finish but it's very common to find that you have solder bridges that are remaining and shorting two or more legs of an IC together. This can seem fairly scary at first but they are relatively easy to clean up using some solder wick and a regular iron. The technique I use is to place the solder wick across the affected pins and apply the iron, being careful not to press too hard, which can damage the pins. 
Here you can see a close-up of four pins on this IC that were bridged with solder blobs. A single application of solder wick and heat removes the excess solder and leaves a nice clean connection between the pins and the pads. Once we've finished with all the surface mount work, we can go through and complete the regular through-hole components as we would normally. And there it is, a completed surface mount ECU, done with nothing but some simple tools. It's not a fast process, but hopefully this has shown you that if you can solder a through-hole style board, then surface mount is not a huge or difficult step. I hope you've all enjoyed this video, and if you've got any questions about the process, don't hesitate to drop a comment. Thanks guys.